Good morning, everybody. Um, excited to be here. What we, meaning us as the club, what we're excited about is, is sharing our story, because we should not be up here talking to you about sports or launching a new team in LA. We had a Mission Impossible. We had, the keys we had last year were to launch a new team in a nine team professional market in the same sport as a five time champ down the street off the 110. In the same sport as a failed franchise in Chivas USA. And two new NFL teams coming, good luck, go for it. And I think what we've accomplished, part of it was we were very humble out of the gate. We had no idea how to pull this off. Because if you look into backwards into traditional sports marketing, you spend millions of dollars on a new launch campaign in LA, and then you cross your fingers, and then you start losing, and then nobody shows up. And there's one thing we couldn't do on the inside before soccer operations came around was to affect the outcome on the field. So out of the gate, we were definitely very humble. But before I jump into our story, is the PowerPoint up? All right, good. Um, I'd like to get a quick feeling for the room about the soccer acumen in the room. So a nine or a 10, if you could raise your hand, that you actually follow clubs overseas in Europe, South America, Mexico, real high, so I can know. All right, cool, we got about, about 25%. Give me uh, the four or fives that watch the World Cup every four years and you have a Brazil jersey in your closet because it's cool. That's about 10. And then uh, zero, one, or two is you could spell soccer. There's no wrong answer. This is perfect. So this is great. I love your big smile. Because if you don't enjoy your experience at LAFC, we didn't do our job. What's happening is we have a people movement in the heart of the city. There's a culture element on top of it, which is world football culture. We have the tens who are coming. We got the English guy who lives in Santa Monica who is yearning for his hometown experience. He tells his neighbor who's not a soccer fan, you got to see what they're doing down at LAFC. That's how we've built this. Two things were hyper authentic to LA and hyper authentic to the world's game, and I'll, I'll share that. So I have some videos in here too to kind of keep the energy up, but to kind of show you that what we're saying is not all talk, we're, we're walking, walking the walk. So we talked about a, a, a new market, 19 market, two new NFL team, same sport as a five-time champ, and same as a failed MLS team in Chivas USA. So, and the question we kept getting asked is do we really, really need another sports team in LA. And I'm sure some of you in the room have, have gotten tired of the messaging coming your way about this new greatest, greatest sports team in LA and we're all gonna win championships. So what I'll show you today is something we do not email to anyone. In the brand world, this is our brand brief. We call it our club brief. We were very careful with our language out of the gate, club, which is by definition a community. So what I'll walk you through today, nobody sees via email. We like to present it in person because you got to see in our eyes, everybody at the club, uh, what we believe in, what we're about. So I thought this would be good to share today. So it's our vision, mission, values, and culture. This first video that we'll play, this was the why video. We played this video at Union Station in January of 2016. And this is going to explain what we're about and also why our crest and why our colors. There's something about a match, about a game, about a team, something you pass down through a story, through your family, generation to generation. It's like time itself is living within you. It's time for the world's game to live in the heart of the world's city. Street by street, block by block, one by one. Fathers and sons, mothers and daughters all come out, rise up and say, this is our club. We are LA. It's about what we are as a people, as a city. This will be our story. Built together, we will make history. Our crest begins with our great city, LA, done in the Art Deco style of our history. At its heart lies the iconic wing, paying homage to the city of angels. A global symbol of power, mobility, and great aspirations. 
The shield is from our city's seal, and our colors black and gold. They embody the success and glamour of our history, and the strength and texture of our streets. These are the colors. These are our symbols. This is our crest. We are LAFC. So my favorite question after this video is, are you with us or are you against us? And it was that kind of challenger, us against the world attitude that got our entire staff early when we had nothing to band together and pull this off. So again, that was the why and, and, and the crest and why it means something. So a quick framing of what we've accomplished from October 2014 when we announced the franchise to today. We built a $350 million stadium in the heart of the city. Who has been to a match? Awesome. So hopefully everybody in this room, if, if you are curious about culture and grassroots and people and heart, please come to a match. It's more than soccer, which is what we'll talk about. So we have a $350 million stadium in the heart of the city. We have a $30 million training center at Cal State LA. We have, again, 19 market I've talked about. On the sports side, we have the most famous coach in US soccer history in Bob Bradley. And then we have the Mexican superstar in Carlos Vela, which works beautifully here in this market. We, on the field, we had record-breaking points our first season, we made the playoffs in our first season. We had 17 home match sellouts. Our supporters, for those of you who don't know football culture, a fan is not a supporter. A supporter stands for 90 minutes. It's your most passionate, it's the most passionate fans in the stadium. They stand for 90 minutes. When the other team scores, they get louder. And that's what you'll see at our stadium. We now have a globally recognized supporter section in the North End. Those of you who have not seen it, come just for that. Um, Record-breaking partnership deals. We had the biggest jersey launch in MLS history. And $95 million in earned media. A lot of people are talking about us, which is amazing. On, in digital, we want engagement. We want people to care about what we're, what we're saying. And then lastly, I love to end with, we have Will Ferrell, which is not a joke. Um, Will's here for great reasons, which you'll see in a little bit. And Bill Plaschke, legendary LA, sports, LA Times sports writer, not a soccer fan. And this is what he wrote about us when he came to our first match. The official opening of the 22,000 seat Bank of California Stadium on Sunday night was about more than a soccer match. It was the unlocking of something completely different. For a couple of hours, it was wonderful. Staples Center loud, Dodger Stadium crazy, the building beautiful and rowdy and perfect. He went right to the heart of what we are and it was a non-soccer fan, which is why the stadium is full. The stadium is not full because we have avid soccer fans there. And thankfully, we didn't have to teach football culture in LA. It was already here. We just needed to build a home. So Bill saying that was amazing. So as far as our brand identity, what I often talk about, you know, when you talk about innovation and new brands and new launches, what worked for us is keeping it simple. Keeping it very simple and also knowing who we are. The challenge internally was as there was five of us in a room, when we got to 150, is who are we? What's our identity? What's that filter you use to make your choices during the day? And this is why this is important. So number one, LAFC is soccer, absolutely, and more. First of all, again, simplicity, it's a celebration of our city. Sports teams like the Boston Red Sox, you know, the Green Bay Packers are about community first. A lot of teams, the teams who celebrate the city first, above them, that's where the heart and the depth starts and we'll always be about that. So this video real quick, we, every match, we invite what we consider micro-influencers to the match. And we're gonna mic you up, and we're gonna let you walk around, and all you're gonna do unscripted is explain what you see. Just describe what you see. This one at the match, uh, Erwin McManus is a uh, pastor at a uh, church here in LA, a, a church group called Mosaic. Um, you know, he's a person whose community trusts him, so you would not normally think in sports marketing to mic up a pastor to talk about what he's seeing. Well, we mic'd up a pastor, and you'll see what he says. One of the biggest differences in the world was a lot of teams tried to come to LA, but this team came out of LA. When I came to LAFC, it felt like this is the soul of our city. Filled with passion, intensity, it, it's diverse, it's beautiful. When I, when I came in here, I thought, I'm home. I knew this 
was built by love. I knew it was built with passion. But I, I'm walking this space and no, love built this. This is a community. This is a family. This is a tribe. What's going on behind me is insane. They are raving fans. That is passion, excitement, zeal, enthusiasm, love is happening right behind me. This is unbelievable. This is LA. No script. What he felt was that love built this. What, when you attend a match, and those of you who've been, what's happening at the match is the community feels loved and respected by the organization, period. It's not transactional, it's very relationship-based, and who better than a pastor to tell you that? Um, secondly, in simplicity, we, we are a passionate community, period. So this video, again, this, this is a video from season one, so watch this guy at the very end, again, unscripted, but this should show you that we are indeed a passionate community. Doc on red, I made a name for myself. Can't lie, I'm doing well for my age. Two dogs at the prey and I'm a downfall girl. They just choose in the casket, now they souls in the grave. I'm a star right, gotta bark right. I induce pain, I am Luke Kane, makes a Bruce Wayne. I'm a dark knight, what you stargaze? Got a hard bite, I'm a dog at the leash, better talk right. Man, I do this, got a new kid, been a student. You're a new fist, I'm a real if you clueless. When I shoot this, I'm too crisp. There are thousands of people in the stadium like him. And when we started seeing these things on camera, we're like, wow, like something's happening. And then we just started doubling down on it. Um, and then lastly, if you're in a room in LA or any city, especially in LA, and they ask you what sports team does the most good, it's, it's usually a pause. And the biggest default, people will eventually say the Dodgers. The Dodgers are the cultural icon of our city, we believe. Uh, and that's your default. But we, found, we saw an opportunity that nobody had a quick answer. So again, the definition of a club overseas is a community. We want to continue to be a force for good. And here's the, our heads are around this, is that we're not going to have a thousand soccer clinics every week all around the city. We want to have five programs that have maximum impact on people's lives. So do, do things well over quantity, and then we're gonna tell the story on top of it, put content on top of it, and we want people to understand what we're about. Because it's, it's, it's a false narrative to think that you could actually envelop the entire city and do the most. Well, let's, we wanna do the best. And this is what, that's what this is about. So five years ago, I started a youth leadership program, and we called it LAFC before the team was here. It was using soccer to teach job skills and life skills to kids in South LA. We pay 30 leaders $100 a month, in high school and they teach after school programs at elementary schools. These are kids that can never look you in the eye before or shake your hand. The sport brought them in and gave them confidence and then we want to teach them a layer of job skills and life skills on top of that. This video is the day that the leaders came into the club and found out that they became the first ever community program in club history. And again, you'll see it in their eyes why this means a lot to them. talk about is accountability. Accountability is owning something. And from day one, we talked about you owning this program, owning your actions, owning your responsibility, owning what you bring to the kids, owning what you bring to your community, owning what you bring to your family. These things are what take us from a normal program to a great program. You are what make this great. When I heard what this program was all about, the light bulb went up because this was exactly what we needed at the core of our club, to be good members of the community in greater Los Angeles and to make good on our promise to unite the world's city through the world's game. And at the core of our club, we needed heart and soul and passion. That's what you folks bring. I am extremely proud 
to be the one to announce that we have made an official bond between your organization and our club. You are part of LAFC in heart, in spirit, and now on paper. Welcome to the club. So we wanted to spend quality time with these 30 kids consistently, consistently over the year. These kids have reached thousands via their own social media. If you search LAFC on Instagram, you're going to see all kinds of people who have taken the identity of the club to their personal identity. Because we took an interest in 30 people, over five years we've reached 100, we've had 150 kids in this program, so do the math in the heart of LA what's happening and how they're sharing their story about LAFC. So, Oftentimes in a launch, you want to have a vision that's bulletproof. The future that we want to create is to unite the world city through the world's game. We all get the power of that. And this is the, our stadium groundbreaking video. I bring up Will Ferrell again. We have Magic Johnson as the owner. We have Nomar Garcia-Para. We have Mia Hamm. But you're going to see how we present them in our world. They're here for authentic reasons. And this video will show you how we use our celebrity owners. It's not just for PR. I want to show you what their heart is about in being a part of our organization. as our official naming rights partner on the Cathedral of Soccer in America. It's been almost 10 years that we've been looking at this building. Anybody that thinks building a stadium in downtown Los Angeles on the main street is an easy deal, not a chance. We're not just here to build a stadium or to build a team. All the owners here are really committed to doing everything we can to help the community to reunite. People now can live and work and come to enjoy a great soccer game and soccer team right in their own community. A soccer only stadium with a view of downtown is a crazy dream and now it's happening. Today we write our own chapter, the chapter of the Los Angeles Football Club. We're gonna gather together for something bigger than ourselves. This is where LA unites. Our strategy from day one was we were obsessed with grassroots political marketing. And it's as simple again as street by street, block by block, one by one. That's an enrolling and forward looking message. We're not looking in the past. And this has really been what we're about. We call this our uh, Carlos Vela Jesus photo, where he was feeding the millions. But look at those faces. You can't script or buy those faces with a campaign. They have to feel it from whatever you're building. I'm going to pass on this because we have 10 minutes. Uh, this video, though, was the day that our supporters named their union. And it was very much a people power co-created day. And you, you kind of get the sense of the one by one. Um, our organizational purpose, our mission, is, of course, to deliver an arrival fan experience. Of course, to create a best-in-class business and soccer organization. But now in season two, the organization is focused on this, is how do we all in our day-to-day bring joy to people. And all of us in this room, if you're at a company or organization, you know how to do that, and we want to keep that top of mind with everybody in our staff. And we also look at ourselves as a service-driven club. We researched a club called Borussia Dortmund in northern Germany, which averages the highest attendance in the world at 80,000 per match. Their supporter section is 25,000 people large. Ours is 3,000. We wanted to learn how a club worked with the community. 
Their ethos is to be service-driven, that the members serve the club and the club serves the community. You'll start seeing in our community events, we're close to 1,000 members, season ticket members, who show up for our biggest community events. And that's what we want to be. We want to be a volunteer army for the city of Los Angeles. That this crest means something, it's not just a team. And it's not just wins and losses, it's about the group. And then in brand world, it's good to get a little more clear on what we are and what we're not. So the top row, we always said from day one, we're building together, not doing it alone. Very much grassroots, not mass market. Relationships, not transactions. That was a Peter Goober thing. You know, Peter owns the Dodgers and the Warriors, and that's one thing he really instilled in us. Uh, again, we've talked about city first, then club versus club over city. The swagger and the cool is what resonates. It's not goofy. It's not telling a 17-year-old kid to delete their Twitter account. That's not our personality, and we don't feel like that's inclusive. And then heart and depth is big for us. Um, you look, watch our game recaps on social media. It's not about the score. Our last match recap, we started out with an Easter egg hunt in the community, and we came through the match itself. So watch our content. You'll kind of get where we are with heart and depth. And then the most importantly is not afraid to take a stand. Um, there was a, there's a homophobic goal kick chant in some Latin football culture. Nobody's ever figured it out how to knock it out. We weren't afraid of that, and we're going for it, and we're taking a stand. We may not succeed, but we're going to try, and that's when people care about what you're up to, and that's what we're about. We're never going to play it safe. This image says it all. Uh, Josh is an Iraq war veteran, brings a son to every game, and again, I see more and more people like this every single match, and it's a beautiful thing, and this is his self-expression. We truly believe our identity. We are the heart of L.A., not only is our stadium in the heart, but everybody who fills that stadium is the heart of LA, and that's what we want everybody to feel. This is uh, another testimonial, like we talked about the pastor. Ray Hudson is the announcer for all the English version of the El Clasico, which is Barcelona versus Real Madrid. So those who watch those matches, you hear Ray's voice, he's, uh, he's English. And I heard he was coming to a match, I threw a mic on him, I said, Ray, just talk, tell me what you see. So for anybody who knows football culture, this is like the Howard Cosell or the uh, John Madden talking about what we're doing in L.A. In this passion, in this fervor, in this down-to-earth, pulsating soul of the game. That's what this is. And it's not false, it's not manufactured. You look at every individual in that throng of people and football is coming through their eyeballs. Football is coming through their eyeballs. Listen to him, he's great. Uh, core values, what are the principles that guide our actions? You know, from day one, we, integrity has been big in our, in our organization. We said we'd build in the heart of the city before we had the land. And when we got the sports, uh, when we got the spot in Expo Park, our community started to trust us. So as an organization, we're not going to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes, but we want to own it if we haven't had integrity. So that's a big part of what we are. Um, I've talked about authenticity, being true to L.A. and true to the global game. And then inclusivity, again, back to the zeros and ones. If you don't enjoy an LFC experience, we're not going to survive in L.A. It's more than that, and we want to be inclusive to all. Our attitude, which is also your brand personality, these are the post-its that are on people's desks if you're on social or the content team. Number one is bold, to be confident and courageous. When we stopped looking left and right about what everybody was doing, things changed. And trust us, early, I was looking at everybody, and we were nervous about everybody. And when we stopped doing that, and we believed in our product, and we're authentic about it, and we look forward, things changed in our world. That relentless is the idea of that challenger mentality at all times. And then respectful again, we want to be civil and humble in our, in our outward and everything we say. On the, as an organization, this wouldn't work if the sports side didn't buy in. And thankfully, Bob and John Thornton, our GM, we're all on the same page. Our soccer philosophy is that we're committed to the development of world-class players and people, and the kids feel that. Right now, we have three of our youth academy teams are ranked number one in the country, and we've had an academy for two years. So the brand and the community is fueling into the streets, and the best players in Southern California all want to be a part of the black and gold for many, many more reasons than the sport, which is, which is beautiful. And then lastly, you know, the power of sport. This was a 12-year-old match before we had a first team. 
We brought support, the supporters wanted to go and attend and support their club. They went here, we were heckled at first. Why do you send adult supporters to a kid's game? And that's what you do overseas, is you support the community from A to Z. This little guy, uh, Tommy, saw the camera, grabs his crest, runs right to it, and this photo was one of those touch points early that something's happening. This kid got it, he got, he got the feeling of it, he got what a crest is all about, and that's the beauty of this photo. So lastly, midsummer last year, the, a chant started. It's called Jump for LA Football Club. And again, for those who haven't been to a match, you have to go just to see this. What we say is that for the first time, Europe and South America exist in LA. This chant itself was, was created by one of the supporters. Then, the, then it took off in the entire North End. But this is the chant that put us on the global map that something special was happening in LA. I just want to welcome everybody in here to the club. Everybody is welcome. Saturday we have a match. Uh, download the LFC app. Bring your family, bring your friends, and just feel it and experience it. Trust me, you'll go away um, believing in football culture and believing in the city. So thanks for having me. I got a few minutes for a, a, a few questions if anybody has any questions. Right there. I'll repeat your question. Um, so it was awesome. Love you. Thanks. A uh, couple questions. One was, can you talk about your partnership with Google? With who? Google. I can't hear. YouTube. Do YouTube TV. Yeah. Jersey? Yeah. Got it. Not just the Jersey. Oh, talk about it? social media for sure opportunities and how it impacted us absolutely and then also can you talk to the plan to extend out and reach out to families um, sure I think that's probably an important demographic for you for yeah. future growth sure so YouTube TV the head of creative for YouTube TV Matt Ross English longtime Tottenham Hotspur fan living in LA for nine years he got the vision of a club he got the power of LA he obviously loves it here and he got the, the vision of a club. Thankfully, he was the first person who took a tour in our experience center as we talked about our vision before we kicked the ball. So then he went up, up, up the chain and says, we gotta, we gotta get in this. YouTube had just put a bet on the World Series, if you remember to the Dodgers last year. So they saw the conversion to a paywall through, you know, sports fans are the most, that's their target for paywalls. You know, we're gonna we watch our sports, we wanna pay our $29.99. So they experimented in the World Series, they saw some great results, and then they took a bet on the heart of the city with the world's game, and they're thrilled. The earned media they've received is through the roof. For us to draft off a global brand like YouTube TV out of the gate, gigantic. Um, we have, we're, built, we're producing content for them behind the wall, which is cool. So if you have YouTube TV, please check out our LAFC pregame and postgame content. So we get to rely on their resources and their content expertise and their advice. They get to jump in on the ground with us in the heart of the city and everybody wins. It's been, it's been really cool. Um, the second question, oh, families. So come to a match because you'll see everything, everything. Our season ticket members may, the actual account holders may skew heavy mail, but those males are bringing everybody. So it's a super diverse crowd. We have the first ever Korean supporters group in the history of MLS. So when we see diversity, we put gas on it. We put water on it. Um, Families are heavy, heavy, heavy uh, in our community. And if you come to Mass, you'll, you'll see. Cool. So, um, thank you for supporting me. Two quick questions. So, first question How do you see 
You got a mic behind you, coming in, coming in hot. Even better. <laughs> Even better. Thank yeah, you. Good. All this is loud. <laughs> All right. Uh, first one, my name is Sami Janado. Thank you for the presentation. Um, so the first question is, how do you see the uh, transition of players from overseas coming to the MLS more and more? Uh, do you see that building the MLS, or do you see it more, uh, like you said, you have some of the best uh, youth services that they have in the MLS, in the academies and whatnot. Do you see the MLS taking a skew towards uh, just bringing in more f stars and former stars from the MLS, or more so really being homegrown and driven through what's going on here in the city? First question. The second question, uh, as you brought in the pastor, I believe, mm -hmm. um, what made you kind of choose that, that uh, influencer if you will sure. to come and speak and like what is your your uh your your demographic that you're trying to reach through the influences that you bring sure. so mls the quick version our biggest revenue challenge is broadcast you know the premier league cuts a five billion dollar global broadcast deal they get 60 to 100 million dollars to each club and they're buying more and more players and they could afford the big salaries um I think we're 10 years away from a big broadcast deal. What it's gonna be fueled by is what we're building in LA. And another reason to come see it, because if the visual of the match, if you watch a Duke basketball game, that makes me wanna to go to a Duke game. You see that student section, you're like, I gotta be there. It's gonna be the supporter culture that's gonna make it a must watch TV event, which is gonna have us compete against basketball, baseball, and NFL. So we need to get the revenue to that place to be able to pay the youngest best players in the world the kind of money they'll make in Europe or South America. On the flip side, what you'll see with our team, the reason, our fans are not stupid. They know when you buy, when you pay a 37-year-old superstar with 30 million Instagram followers, they, they know why you did it. And then the club itself is crossing their fingers that this person doesn't get hurt and doesn't blow up on their face. What you'll see with us right now, we have young guys. We have a 21-year-old Uruguayan that we scouted that we may move on one day. We have a 20-year-old midfielder from Colombia. We have a 20-year-old center back from Colombia. So we're going young, 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 young. And then we're building our academy so that we can also Phil, um, but the fans see that we're going after young and hungry. When the brand meets the build, it happened in Atlanta. Atlanta United is amazing because the brand met the build and they saw a young swagger fire team on the field and the fans get it and they get what we're going after. So we're going to go young. Um, and then for the pastor, all, the people we bring in the North End, it could be um, an NBC4 sportscaster. It could be, who else have we had? We have, uh, you know, Colin Hanks is a big fan. Dave Farrell from Lincoln Park. We just want people whose community trust them. It could be a mixologist in LA. It could be a hotel owner. It's just about people who have built something authentically, and I know that their voice, that people trust them. So the pastor was an example because he's obviously authentic about what he does, and people will trust you know, his opinion and his take on stuff. Cool. Back there? Oh, Mike. Who has the mic? Oh, sorry. We got, I got a mic right here. Sorry. Oh, we got one. She already has a mic. Sorry. Yeah. No, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, I, I'm in Texas, and I have a grandson here in California, so I've tried like hell to get him to like baseball. I've paid for Dodger camp, <laughs> Texas Ranger camp. I've taken him to Cooperstown to playoff games, and for some ungodly reason, this kid likes soccer. Smart kid. Yeah, I've tried everything. So I said, well, you know, why don't you go to a soccer game? He goes, Grandma, soccer's European. There's nothing here. There you go. So I watch your video, so I think probably this weekend I'll break down in spring and, and take him to a... Please do. After your video. So it, was very, it, it, it moved me enough to say, okay, I'll, yeah. I'll forego the... Uh, he's going to love it, and he's going to fall in love. Because it's what he watches on TV. It's going to cost me money, so... That's we'll okay. See how much. I might take care of you after if you chase me out. For the, for the grandson. Jay, let me know when we're out of time, so I'm going to just... This is last one. Okay. Um, you talked about brand in general, um, but one thing that I don't think you touched on a lot of was the brand of the stadium as a whole. So yeah. I've been to a number of games, absolutely adore them. And one of the things I liked when I first walked in was brands that I know existed in sort of that area in Los Angeles, like Soul Sausage and Bledsoe's for sure. food. And so I'm curious if you could delve a little bit more into why you made those choices sure. for um, food and beverage and all these other things, because I think there's a great variety. And I feel like that's also a reason why I go is because, again, it's part of the experience and my experience as a whole. Sure. So it started with the brand identity that you saw, which right. is authentic to L.A. And, you know, in the sports partnership world, it's not reasonable to think that I could cherry pick every single partnership partner and make them hyper authentic to LA and they hit our revenue numbers. So anybody go, taking that approach is not right up there. 
But we, with that as our identity, we asked Soul Saucers first. We asked Chica's Tacos first. So we, we asked local first, and ideally if the math worked, then everybody was happy. So at least our approach was created by the identity. That's the most important thing in any organization, is at least get the approach right. Um, did the did a mass market brand come in and hit a number in a category we needed? Yes, but we're gonna do the best we can to kind of keep that corralled. And the idea again is that they're authentic to LA, people trust them, and that's exactly why you're resonating with the experience, because you see those little touch points of trust. Cool. All right, come to a game on Saturday. Thank you, thank you.